Okay, so good evening. Good evening. So our topic for today is about uh, uh, forces or the information systems to achieve competitive advantage. Okay, so uh, the most popular person in this uh, topic is uh, Michael Porter. And most of us uh, already know or already know what are the uh, Porter's five forces analysis model. Okay, so by the way, uh, when we talk about the uh, the Porter's five forces model, we have the uh, we focus actually in the external environment. Okay, so external environment consists of the competitors that we have externally. Okay, so the first one, the first uh, the first factor or the Porter that affects the company, all of us are uh, or or all of the business must know this. Okay. So the first in line is the yung tinatawag nating rivalry. Okay, so when we talk about rivalry, okay, so rivalry among existing competitors. So that read first. Okay, so this looked at the number of competitors and their strength in comparison, and also it also considers the intensity of rivalry. How do you how do we uh, define intensity? It it means that if the intensity or the rivalry is intense in the sense that too many competitors, for example. What will happen if the competitors are too many? Okay, so that's the first question. Okay, so if the, if the, the, what do you call this one? The competitors are extremely high. Okay, so they are, the, the rivalry is quite, it's kind of uh, different or it's like very intense in, in the sense. So what, what will happen? No, so if the rivalry is intense, what would happen to the profit? Profit tends to low down, okay? Because the 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 intensity of the competition makes the profit low down because of the competition itself. Okay, it's about the cost and profit analysis as well. Okay, next in line. It considers the influence of competitive rivalry. Of course, the, the influence of the competitive uh, rivalry, for example, uh, airlines, you know, when we talk about the airlines, they hit us too many uh, intensity in terms of rivalry. For such, there is the Cebu Pacific, Philippine Airlines, right? we have Zest Air. So the rivalry is kind of intense to the sense that the cost that will be incurred for their operations is quite high. Okay, and then uh, their profits might be lower. Okay, so the, is the rivalry between the airline companies that higher? Uh, it can be, yes, it can be, it can be high in terms of like they, they, they compete by themselves and uh, no other airlines uh, in this, in this country are available for, uh, or available or uh, financially capable to compete in those or in those big four in the big players okay so later on we will consider that. okay so let's talk about again uh threat or let's have the threat of new entrants or or bargaining power of suppliers okay so here if the suppliers have high bargaining power they can influence pricing and profits. How do how do this statement? No, so if suppliers are uh, they are powerful when there are few customers are small, few substitute cost of switching suppliers is relatively high. For instance, if we have a uh, fuel business, no, if you if we want to establish a gasoline business, no, so the suppliers have a bargaining power. Why? Because we don't have uh, a totally uh, occupied or what we call that uh, own oil rig here. So we get uh, we tend to go outside and have a supplies. So they have the control because we don't have our own to control. Diba? We have we don't have our own to control those uh, uh, supplies. Okay, so it means that if have, if suppliers have high bargaining power, they can influence pricing and profit. So if 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 they want to increase their cost, then we have nothing to do with that. Okay? We have nothing to do with that in the sense that wala nga tayo sariling oil rig. Kaya, 
sila ang nagde-declare ng kanilang mga pricing strategies. Okay? And it will affect our profit because it will definitely change or affect the cost or our cost of goods sold or or our uh, profit as well. Okay? So that's the bargaining power of suppliers. And if we if we are going to switch to another suppliers, it will be uh, a higher cost. Why? Because we will go to another country that has supply supplies. For instance, the the main the main uh, supply of uh, of petroleum products in the in the world is in the Middle East. Then it we will be if we if we will try to transfer or if if we will try to find suppliers from other country. They still get from the Middle East, and then they will have the higher prices. So it's not practical to have or to switch suppliers. Okay, customers are relatively small, actually. Okay, so the suppliers, if the customers are relatively small, those uh, who can afford to have a gasoline business, not everyone can afford to have a gasoline business. That's why the customers are really few. Okay. Few substitutes in the sense that we, all, we only have three types of gasoline here. We have only leaded, uh, we have already unleaded, diba? only unleaded pala. So we have already the diesel unleaded and then what we call that one, the, the B power or the high, high, the much higher octane gasolines in the Philippines. Okay? So let's go now to the counterpart, the bargaining power of buyers. Customers can exert pressure and drive, uh, drive prices down. They are powerful when there are few customers kasi nga konti ang customers. So they have the power to ask for the suppliers. Again, to ask for the suppliers. Okay, so kasi dito sabihin natin, uh, if, you, if you will not decrease the price, then I will find another supplier. That will work if there are plenty of suppliers and the switching cost is quite low. No? So it will not apply in the gasoline but other products na madaming supplies. For instance, face mask. If you're if the supplier still cost face mask for 70 pesos, then uh, I can say that I can switch to another supplier that offers a much lower cost than this uh than this supplier one. Mm -hmm. I can go to supplier two and ask to bargain, bargain or uh, to negotiate the prices because of demand and the need of the uh demand and supply analysis. Face mask nowadays. Okay, so it must be considered by the company owners as well. Okay, next in line, we have also this two, the bargaining power of suppliers and buyers. No? So it can be balanced if there are actually new entrants. What is the impact of new entrants to the suppliers? Okay, so every market has established market leaders. Yeah, that's the first one. Okay, new entrants can eat into the market share. For instance, our internet services here in the Philippines uh, kapag dumami ang ating mga player or the, the players in providing internet services, what will happen to those old players such as PLBT, Globe, Smart? So their profits, it will be a threat to them. Okay, It will be a threat to those companies. And then uh, the market share, their market share quite uh, will lower down. No, it really, it, it happened already when the converge arises here. Okay, so if barriers to entry are low, for instance, barriers, no, it has too many factors to consider, such as government policies, what else? Uh, we have also the pricing, okay, so the, the, the services to be rendered. Okay, so if the barriers to entry are low, the threat to existing players are high. If mababa po or if, if it's lack ang policies ng bansa, na madali silang makakapasok dito sa Pilipinas, then it will be a threat to the existing players. Okay, so the the economy, no, it will be uh, there will be a misbalance kung lahat nakakapasok dito sa bansa natin. Okay, yeah. So that is the threat of new entrants. And the last part of the Porter's five forces is the threat of substitutes. No, so ito po, uh, substitutes are alternatives that serve the same needs. Ito number one dito yung prices. Okay. So the higher the substitutes that will drive prices down, if this substitute can lower down, for instance, Aqua Plus. Diba kapag ang Aqua Plus, nakopya na, nakuha na yung kanyang concept, mapapababa na. So the dami na yung gagawa. And then the, the lower number of substitutes can result in monopoly. So ibig sabihin, there are some items na although authentic, no, we still look for the, the cheaper one or the most or the most affordable one. Kaya po mas pumupunta tayo doon. And kapag ganun ang nangyari, it will lead to monopoly. What is monopoly? Lahat nandun na. 
Okay, you can find it at, at, at an affordable prices. You can find it at some uh, prices much lower than the original. Okay, the nangyari na ito sa mga suppliers ng sapatos, di ba? Ang dami na po lumalabas sa sapatos ngayon, although not authentic and not original, such as OEM, di ba, originally, original equipment manufactured, uh, still, mas tinatangkilig po ng Pilipino yung mas mababang presyo because we must consider that also. Okay? So that is that that sums up no the Porter's five forces analysis. Now, so what are the strategies when dealing with these competitive forces? No, so number one, yung yung mga, yung mga low cost leadership natin. So again, the, the the company goals must be to maximize the profit and to minimize the cost as much as possible, but not compensating the quality of the products we are selling. Okay, so yun pa rin, still at the same goal. But we have to lower down a little bit. Pag nakikita natin that the the threats are already going near to us, and also we have the product differentiation. When we talk about the product differentiation, it it talks about the unique selling proposition of the product or what makes the product different from the others. We consider this at the edge of the product, and also. When we have the competitive advantage, we can say that the, there is always a lower opportunity cost in terms of uh, if the benefit is foregone, then wala naman, uh, mataas yung level na mawawala sa atin. No? So, ibig sabihin, mababa yung opportunity cost. Okay? Focusing on market niche. Okay? So, again, there are still established brand na po na kahit pumasok na dito yung iba, dumating na sa Pilipinas yung ibang product, still, and jan pa rin sila because of their market niche. And lastly, customer intimacy. So it, it's a matter of customer relationship management no? when, we are, when, when we are dealing with marketing. So we, we, miss, we must adapt no? what the customer really needs. Okay, nowadays, nasa social media na tayo, we are in, already in the digitalization age. Kaya dapat ang mga companies today, nowadays, are adapting no? a much integrated marketing strategy, including cell phone applications, kapag bibili, and so on and so forth. Although this might be a costly one, but we must consider the return in the succeeding periods. Okay? Next. Value chain analysis and value web. Okay? So value chain analysis talks about, ito yan, we have the primary activities. What are the primary activities? These are the most directly related doon sa pag-produce at pag-distribute ng product na nagki-create ng value to the customer. Ito yung direct. Okay? What about the support? Support activities make the delivery of primary activities possible and it consists of infrastructure, such as yung mga admins natin, human resource, we have the technology, and also the procurement processes. Okay? So mostly this includes fixed cost. Okay? Yung fixed cost. So ibig sabihin yung mga pasweldo natin, pasweldo natin sa kanila, Okay, so what are the compensation and rewards? Siyempre, mas, mas productive kapag mas mataas ang cost. You know? Mas mataas yung cost na binibigay natin sa kanila. Although, they are, part, they are seldom part of our decision making, but rather, uh, they are considered relevant pa rin naman. Okay, kasi yung primary activities consists of materials, labor directly related to the production, and also we have the uh, corresponding overheads. No, We have the... Uh, overheads that is variable or that that uh, changes when the volume of product production changes as well. Okay, so those are directly attributable costs. Okay, next in line. And also, we are trying to compare or we are trying to compare what are our performance versus the industry standards. It is, it is also known as benchmarking. Okay, so it, it, it involves comparing the efficiency and effectiveness of your business processes against strict standards. So the standards must be set by the management and later on in the controlling part, if the performance are measured, no, tignan natin kung naabot ba. And if there is a difference, we call it as variance. Variances are investigated whether it is unfavorable or favorable. Okay? So that is also called gaps. Diba? We have gap analysis and also variance analysis. Okay? So if material, if mataas masyado yung variance, then let's check whether it is favorable or unfavorable. And we investigate and we, we, we derive at the corrective actions or preventive actions para hindi na maulit yung sobrang taas na variances. 
Okay, next. We have also the best practices. These are uh, uh, based on the practices of those eff effective and efficient companies already. No, so most, most of the time, kinokopi natin yung mga good strategies and also yung mga solutions natin to problem solving. Okay, so the adoption of Prague Instant, the adoption, adoption of uh, Lean Six Sigma, also in the TQM, we adapt that as much as possible kung kakayanin. So we are trying to adopt best practices that is good for our businesses. Okay, so nowadays in the world of e-commerce, in the world of digitalization or digitization, uh, we are trying to have the best practices among the best practices ever. Kasi isang pagkakamali lang dyan, magkakaroon tayo ng mga problema. Okay, so problems will arise if we commit that mistake, especially in the ordering system, in the procurement stages, in customer feedbacks, and so on and so forth. Okay, next. We have also value web. No? When we talk about value web, this pertains po doon sa mga uh, para din siyang Porter's Five Courses Analysis. Pero tinitignan natin dito, internal and external as well. Okay, so for instance, this is the industry, that is uh, industry and firms that adopted ERP systems, okay, ERP systems and core transaction systems for their indirect suppliers. They are indirect suppliers, for instance, uh, kasi yung may mga iba't ibang uh, companies na pumapasok doon na nagbibigay ng services doon sa isang industry. Okay, those are the, for example, IT. no So IT contractors, we have also different contractors as well para doon sa development ng ating enterprise resource planning or the ERP systems. Okay, so we are trying to uh, improve what are the, the rooms for improvement doon sa ating industry. Okay, so they are, they are standing up there in the uh, our indirect suppliers and also there are the strategic alliance and partner firms no so in, ngayon kasi there are plenty of companies na nag group together para po sa isang goal no so may mga partnership at saka joint ventures tayong ginagawa that added or that adds value to the companies for instance merger and consolidation we have that so we are trying to have the partnership with them para po mas maganda mas madaming idea Diba? Two heads are better than one. And also for our customers, we have the CRM systems. How, how, how are we going to establish or to give feedback? Okay, for instance, diba? when we when we shop to Lazada, Shopee, diba? uh, we have review, we have uh, option to review the products, diba? we have to confirm if our order is okay na. Diba? So those are the customer relationship. And also with, with the Suppliers naman, we have the supply chain management systems, of course, syempre, you know, consider natin dyan, di ba, especially kapag yung product mo ay mabilis masira, syempre, we are considering gano ba kapilis ang dating yan. Okay, and also, we are considering yung lead time, and that's why we are computing economic order quantity, and we are adapting uh, different inventory management systems. Okay, and also we have the supplier extranets and net marketplaces. Diba, madami na pong marketplaces ngayon, especially in the social media. So, ibig sabihin, to sum it up, the suppliers, no, we have so plenty of suppliers depending on the product. Depending on the product. Kasi mas madaming suppliers ito, mas mura mo mabibili yan. Okay, mas madali mo manenegotiate yung, yung, yung isang product price, especially kapag madaming suppliers. No? So, ibig sabihin, to sum it up, the value web, uh, everything gives value to the company. Okay? Including the firms, the suppliers, and customers. Okay? So, lahat yan, tinicheck natin, anong mga value ang nabibigay sa atin ito. And then later on, we will assess those values. And we are going to have a assessment also on how are we going to improve those uh, things that give value to the industry okay and then the last part is the ecosystem strategic model okay so ecosystem strategic model is a modified you know, it's a modified model whereby we're trying to provide strategy okay and how are we going to uh have a strategic uh, strategic solutions to the problems and also we are considering the influence on digitization for instance uh digitization or digital age really uh, gives us new strategies. We are, we are arising with the new core competencies as well. 
Okay, so meron tayo mga core competencies na tinatawag here. Di ba? Nagbabago kasi yan. Kasi we're not going to make a traditional ordering system anymore. We're, we're living in the age or we're li living in the digital era. Kaya po, very seldom na magkaroon na po ng mga, panib ng mga traditional ordering. Di ba? Some meron ng GCash. Di ba? GCash can be used to pay and also another mode of cashless payments. Di ba? And also, digitization really influences the business model. So the business model, gagamit na tayo ng iba't ibang tools. Di ba? Iba't ibang tools na po for us to, to in, order, in order to establish convenience. Okay? Para mas convenient yung ating value creation, mas mabilis. Okay? So yung pagkuha natin ng mga feedbacks, mas mabilis na hindi na kailangan kumuha ng box dyan na may papel for comment section. Why? Kasi meron na mga social media. Okay? So that creates our feedback as well. And also, our business equity stem increases the network. No? So yung joint value creation, again, babalikan lang natin ito. Okay? Babalik lang tayo doon sa kanina. Okay? So ito po, yung value web. Okay? Yung value web natin, ano yung mga nag-add ng value doon sa company natin? Then that's it. ba? Diba? So again, the strategies... No, so yung reactive positioning in the ecosystem, kailangan ito, maayos ito. Okay? So if, if maganda ang pagkaka-establish natin ng ating ecosystem model, yung strategic model natin, so how are we going to establish new business model? So we have the reactive positioning, for instance. Then yung business ecosystem natin will generate, uh, will generate several strategies on how are we going to improve our operations. Also in our innovation process. Kasi most of the time, research and development are overlooked by the management. All right? If, it, if, if, if it's overlooked at well, then what will happen? Look at Nokia and BlackBerry. Okay? Nokia and BlackBerry, they are very late in terms of innovation. Kaya po, nagsara, or not necessarily nagsara, na wala, lumiit, bumaba ang kanilang market share. Okay? That's why digitization is important. These are the several models. Diba? We have the Porter's Five Forces Analysis. We have the uh, value chain, value web. Diba? And also we have ecosystem strategic model. So that sums up my report. So have a nice day, everyone. And hope you like my presentation. Thank you.